welcome to Mix Workshop. Today we're going to do a quick video on the installation of a one-shot lubrication system on my Precision Matthews 727V mill. Hope you find this useful. Okay, so today we're going to install a one-shot lube system on my Precision Matthews 727V. I uh, got all of these parts and everything from another YouTube uh, channel. I don't remember which one. I'll try to find it and put a description in the link or a link in the descriptions. Uh, but basically, it consists of a pump, which uh, got off of eBay, a manifold. Also from eBay, I got the 10 port one. I counted 11 oil ports on my mill, so one of them I'll have to continue to lube manually. Uh, some 6 millimeter, uh, I believe it's polyethylene hose that goes between the pump and the manifold, and then 4 millimeter, uh, same kind of hose. Um, I got another roll of this on order. It occurred to me that uh, 20 feet wasn't going to be enough. And some adapters that I made up. Threaded 5 millimeter, and they push in place of the ball oilers. And finally, some banjo fittings that take the... Uh, four millimeter uh, tubing and our threaded five millimeter with a little o-ring to screw into the adapter that I made. These will go on each uh, each oil port. There's ten of those. So I've marked the four holes where I'm going to mount the pump and I need to get the drill out, drill the holes, and we're going to use riv nuts to uh, attach the pump to the side of the cabinet. Use my Vera deburring tool. First time I put one of these on, these riv nuts, I overestimated uh, the amount of force it took. Oops, that's right. Screw this this way. There we go. It does not take much. And it's tight. These riv nut kits are surprisingly cheap. Four stainless steel quarter twenty Allen cap screws.
One of the nice things about this manifold is that each output port is individually adjustable for the amount of flow. All right, we're going to leave my shelf. Check that and make sure it's at least close to level. Okay, so those, it is level. Same process. Our manifold. And here we go. Okay, so we Plumbed the, ran the tubing to the pump, and now we got to run it to the manifold. All right, so now we need to start running the individual oil lines to each of the uh, locations on the mill. So now we need to run the individual oil lines to each of the locations on the mill where the ball lube uh, fittings are. Um, best technique I've seen for getting these out is to use a little screw screw it in there, displace the ball a little bit, and yank it out. So, haven't tried it yet, let's give it a shot, and uh, I'll uh, let you know how it goes. Okay, so I managed to get the uh, first ball oil fitting out and destroy it in the process. Uh, I had to use a slightly bigger screw, and I guess it just pushed the ball in the spring out the back. I had to uh, use a magnet on the screw to get the uh, the ball and the spring out of there. 
I did manage to get them out. So this is the side with the gib. And the person I stole this idea from mentioned in his video that when you put oil in there, it's oiling this side of the gib. Right here. And the part that moves against the base is the other side of the gib. So we're going to use a transfer punch and tap a uh, make a mark <clears throat> on the gib so we can drill it out. Now the other thing I did is I put a mark, scratched a mark on the gib there so that I can see where it was adjusted to. Now, there's our mark on the gib where we need to drill. I'm going to drill slightly bigger than the oil port so that as the gib wears and adjusted is adjusted, it leaves clearance. So it looks like these gibs were scraped. After I drill the whole oil hole for the gib, I'm also going to use the Dremel and cut some uh, oil grooves in this side to help get the oil disperse. I'll come back after I do that. Okay, so as you can see, we drilled our hole lightly chamfered it. I'm going to run a stone over that side. Drilled this side and then used the Dremel to make some lines for the oil. I did stone this side already so there are no burrs. It's nice and smooth. I'm going to stone the other side then I'll put the gib back in and put the oil port in. All right, so I just used this little five millimeter bolt, threaded one of the adapters onto it, and tapped it into place. Now I can screw the banjo fitting on and run a hose to it. And there's the banjo fitting installed. Okay, I couldn't resist it. I had to try it. So I shut off all of the, uh, the other nine outlets on the manifold. And you can see the lube, and it's up through the tube. I still got to attach the tube all the way to the fitting. And when I pumped it, I could see a little bit coming out. I'm definitely going to have to adjust the flow rate for it once I get them all on there. But this is turning out exactly as I hoped. This is going to be awesome. I'll bring, uh, bring you back after I uh, do the rest of them and get everything tidied up and show you how it works. So I just wanted to uh, conclude this video on the adding the one-shot lube system to my mill uh, showing you the installation. The um, banjo fitting there is uh, apart from McMaster car they are uh, aircraft or uh, airline fittings so uh, high pressure airline fittings so they should be able to handle the oil. Um, they're a little pricey. They're uh, a little over $7 each and I needed, I thought, 10 of them. Turns out I was only able to put nine on. I'll show you why. So there's one up on the, uh, the head on the side with the gib. Another one there. <clears throat> Two on the, there it is, on the front there for the x-axis. Uh, oh, excuse me, the y-axis. One down there for the x-axis. One down there for the x-axis. One, where is it? Uh, 
uh, there for the y-axis again. Another one for the y-axis right there. And then one buried up in there underneath my uh, power feed for the uh, x-axis screw, which is nice because I would have had, had no, been no other way to oil that. The two that I could not, I knew I wasn't going to be able to do one because um, I only had 10 ports. But then this one here on the x-axis screw, y-axis screw, and this one on the x-axis screw don't have enough clearance for the banjo fitting. So um, I'll just have to continue to manual, manually lubricate those. Um, but you can see the lines came out pretty nice. Just zip tied them together. It does seem that the oil does have a tendency to drain back a little bit. Um, never all the way, but uh, it pumps up pretty quickly. So that's a wrap for this, and uh, talk to you later.